about the brig. I've never lived here. So I reached out to our very own one-man time team and celebrated historian, past provost Bruce Jameson, to get some history and information on the brig, which must have came as a bit of a surprise to him because I spent my entire life in school not listening to him. But when you need some history, there really is only one person you can go to speak to. Thanks, Chris. So, my credentials for being handed the honour of acclaiming this ancient place of habitation are not that I'm a resident of this border settlement, but I'm a proud user of its many attributes. I have long lingered in the vast array of traffic lights and shopped in its plethora of emporium. My very first taste of subsequent love for all spiced foods came from our very own Ash Man, which you might have been the best part of town, right? My first taste of subsequent dislike for a certain tonic wine was from ba um, Bandas, long before it was a DIY shop. And my first job straight out of school was as a trainee coach builder at Aikens. We learned how to paint metal, sweep floors, and uh, no much else. And don't get me started on Aldi. I can't be the only one that's went for cheese and biscuits and left with an angle grinder, right? Seriously. And who can forget the memorable walks out to the brig on March's day, following the bands and many floats, waving to all and sundry, greeting friends and strangers with a hug and a kiss, and sharing a wee dram or two. It's the walk back that always remains hazy for me. And I've also fond memories of coming out to the brig to visit my cousins and my late Aunt Anne, who was an amazing strong woman and one who is sorely missed. And now, of course, we can all dine in its recently refurbished hostelry, the Bridge Inn on whose hallowed steps I now stand. Isn't it nice too to see the return of the name Battistins? A historic reminder of the once famous publican who entertained the town council in the dyers and days of yore. Mr Battiston also served many a pint to weary travellers and thirsty residents in past times. Drinkers from the brig have, over the centuries, left us with a great compendium of useful advice, such as, alcohol is not the answer, it just makes you forget the question. <laughs> Alcohol is a slow poison, but who's in a hurry? And many things can be preserved in alcohol, but your dignity isn't one of them. <laughs> and now the brick has this new drinking and eating concern, and I'm sure that we'll all offer our thanks to the team behind this resurrected establishment, and we appreciate the hospitality today. For the brick has always been a welcoming and industrious village. The homes of toll collectors, millers, Polish contractors, pallet producers, and paper makers. Over the banks of his boundary river, rival armies fought for possession of young King, King James V, but that was 500 years ago. Today, in 2022, we celebrate another historic occasion. The first time in the proud annals of Linlithgow Bridge that a female provost has stood in these sacred steps. <laughs> provost Park, we salute you in your westernmost possession, the 83rd recorded provost and the first ever female provost. But don't be alarmed, good burrs, for she is just as determined as any of her predecessors to defend her boundaries, especially here in our much-loved brig. So let no one dare meddle with her ancient rights and privileges or molest the good people of this cherished township, a vital part of our historic traditions and a fundamental, fundamental piece in the historic jigsaw of our March's celebration. Please join me in my toast. Long live Linlithgow Bridge. Long live the marches. And I pass you over to Deacon Duncan Stephen.
Thank you, David. So who better to reply on behalf of the brig? Another novice today, Deacon Duncan Stephen. He's a dab hand with a brush and a ladder and will add a bit of colour anywhere. He knows the brig well and he lives just up the road. Ladies and gentlemen, Deacon Duncan Stephen. <laughs> Thank you, Provost. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, members of the Deacon's Court, fraternity of tyres, to participants from all organisations of the town here today to celebrate the traditional riding of the marches. I would like to thank the Provost for giving me this opportunity to give the reply from the brig. It is indeed an honour. In fact, I'm a bit overcome in emotion. <laughs> I would also like to thank David for his great welcome to the brig. And as, as David has been dressed into my stature, I will endeavour to keep my speech the same, short. I have a new habit of the brig as I moved here only eight years ago after I got married to my lovely wife Susan. Susan has lived at the brig for almost 20 years now and is very proud to call herself a brigger. In fact, my first visit to the brig as a youngster also involved a female. As after being to school camp the month before and meeting kids from the other schools in the town, I ended up finding a girlfriend. But someone who grew up in the East End a long time ago thought, well, this will never last, because long distance relationships seldom do. <laughs> of course, my now longer agile legs walk into the town is merely a stroll. After speaking to some other briggers, I've been led to believe that Bellside Court is not even in the brig. I still can't get my head round what down briggers, up briggers actually are. Maybe somebody here can give me the answer. Of course, the brig is steep in history, the battle on Lithgow Bridge, this brigger itself, and of course the paper bills. They gave many people of the brig in the town employment and also led to many marriages and friendships for life. I'm also very happy to see how the brig is now back as the main industrial area of the town regarding employment, business and continuing to carry, up, carry out the hard working traditions at this end of the world. Briggers are of course very loyal to where they come from. If ever asked where they are from, it's never on Lithgow, it's always on Lithgow Bridge. And it's fantastic to see everyone here today. Christ, there's plenty of folk here today. <laughs> and I'd like to say hello to my mum, my sister Palmer, Caroline, my daughter Libby and her partner Brendan. The only one listening today is my dad. He enjoyed the marches, walking behind the band, or even participating in the marches as he did with Scotch Hope. And he danced all the way along the street. He always enjoyed coming out to the break to listen, laugh, or groan at the speeches. He might not be here today, but I'm sure he will hear and see it. So hopefully one of my sisters are recording this, and we can let him see it when we next visit him and tell him all about the day. I would also like to add, my dad loved the rugby club. And I would like to thank them for what they have done to help make our civic fortnight the success it is. So to finish, I'd like to thank you all for being here today at our Western Boundary and supporting the tradition of the marches. We head on now to our Eastern Boundary to take all is well there and to install the barn bailey. Safe out, safe in, long live the Deacon's Court, long live the marches. <laughs> We move on to the Dyers and other fraternities. I would like to ask Middle Bailey Lee Frickleton to propose a toast to the Dyers and other fraternities. 
Lee says he does actually work in front of his control panel at Aeneas. He enjoys the great outdoors with his family, fancy cars and motorbikes, always putting the brakes on when his lovely wife, Jane, keeps him in check. Ladies and gentlemen, Lee Frickleton. My Lady Provost, Vice Admiral of the Fourth, my Lord Deacon of the Dyers, and Dyers, Mr. Callum Laurie, past Provost, Baileys, Deacons, Fraternities, Honoured Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, it's my privilege today to toast the Dyers and other Fraternities. It's so lovely returning to the steps of the Brigand and being able to look out to so many smiling faces and everyone enjoying themselves and having looking forward to a great day. Our Brigands had a facelift and haven't they done well? Yay. Finally, no virtual and no Zoom this year. Past Provost Hector Woodhouse moaned, nay hugs, and it did give us some wee problems. I can pick out some well kept faces today, and hopefully we'll need to say things like, Paul Meenan, put your camera on, son. Past Provost Cummings, you're on mute. Again. Past Provost Cunningham, please remove the virtual background. That's just not today's scenario. And Bobby Benny. We said dress for the occasion, and we don't just mean from the waist up. <laughs> the stalwarts of fraternities, of course, sits with the Dyers. Their motto, we die to live, we live to die. But it's great to see so many other organisations putting forward deacons today. Today I'd like to make special reference to one in particular. Sorority are riding their marches, their 25th marches today. Happy birthday, Sorority. <laughs> Now, back to the Dyers, they far exceed 25 years. The Dyers have stood firm and strong for a long time. Did you know a link bond of recognition dates from 1610, with a strong belief of being in existence long before? The oldest minute book is recorded as far back as 1713. After their rising performance on Deacon's Night this year, Sunday morning, I'm sure some of them felt just as dated. Sons of fathers affirming the future. Lord Deacon of the Dyers, Crawford Flint, follows a family tradition, not the first to do so. It has been mentioned the Lord Deacon enjoys a good spirit party at the palace. He will fall over anyone. Today, we have a reply from Mr. Callum Laurie. Callum, a retired police officer, started as a fresh 18-year-old working in many of Lothian's regions retiring after a long service medal, only to realise all he knew was how to police, so he rejoined as a consultant and worked a further 10 years, retiring in 2004. He's been teetotal for 15 years, and I'm guessing he's probably going to be the first sober dyer on the steps of the Brigand today. <laughs> Callum is the son of Jock and Margaret Laurie, who owned a butcher shop on the high street for many years. As a child, Callum would dig holes in the garden to catch apple thieves. I think that was setting on to his future career in the police. Now, Callum, I believe, is a keen bowler. He once went on a bowling trip to Spain with some mates. He thought, you know, being away, I'd keep in the good books with Evelyn. So he turned home with a Christmas gift, and that was a manger. <laughs> it wasn't until the family were setting up on Christmas Day they realised there were six wise men and no shepherds. So I'm guessing, again, that was a good buy, Callum. Callum has been a dyer for 17 years and he was a standard bearer for six years. He's given a speech in the House of Lords, but that's nothing to a speech at the brig. We still have sons and fathers standing together in the dyers today. Gentlemen, it's a sight to see. Thank you. Our growing community has given rise to a number of organisations today and many have taken part in the procession. A testament to how much the march still means to so many people of Linlithgow. The fraternities are so much changed from the past and all taking part with just as much enthusiasm, be it marching as an organisation, as a group, club or association. 
be it in specific dress code or fancy dress, you're here and that's what matters. There's no doubt you add to the splendour of the day. One goal, we're in this together. Ensuring the riding of the marches is carried out in time-honoured tradition. After all, that's what we do. So, to all fraternities, I leave you with this thought. It's good to have our marches back, no more virtual, everyone together supporting and celebrating. Soon we'll depart to the brig and head to our ancient port to pay our respects. Install our bar and bailey and toast the port. Ladies and gentlemen, it remains for me to say, Oh my wee bottle, if you were foo, I would sit and sing to you, but a weary youth came over my throat, so I just drunk the lot. <laughs> Please raise your glasses and toast. The Dyers and other fraternities, long live the marches. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce the reply on behalf of the Dyers and other fraternities. A wee change is already mentioned this year. Delivering the reply on behalf of my Lord Deacon of the Dyers Crawford Flint, can I ask you to put your hands together and welcome to the steps Dyer Callum Laurie. Thank you. Provost, Vice Admiral of the Fourth, Baileys, Deacons, Fraternities, Dyers, Honoured Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. Greetings from my Lord Deacon of the Dyers, Crawford Flint, who has asked me to address you on his behalf today. However, he has assured me that he will take the credit if this goes well. <laughs> it will be noticed that in the long history of the Fraternity of the Dyers, the decision to ask me, a teetotaler, to stand on these historic steps and address you will one day come back to haunt the Dyers. I might start a trend. Will it catch on? No! No, I rather doubt it. It was lovely to see ex provost John Cunningham enjoying his marches today in the company of the Dyers. And I do look forward to three years' time. I don't want to rush Lady Provost, but in three years' time when we have the Lady Provost riding with us on that particular day. <laughs> Lady Provost, it can be of no coincidence that having been deprived of our marches celebrations for two years, it has taken a woman of your calibre at the helm with her famed multitasking abilities that finally we are back in our best dress and enjoying our day. Lady Provost, I thank you and salute you, ma'am. I say, of course, we're all in our best dress. That's, of course, with the exception of Dyer's Bobby and Douglas Benny, who are in their work attire. <laughs> now, why am I here? Middle Bailey Lee Frickleton. Thanks to Lee for his kind introduction. Not bad for a man who only has English as his second language. As a fraternity, the oldest in the Royal Borough, we are now celebrating our 350. Or is it 351st? Or is it the 352nd in existence? That darn Covid really did mess things up. Anyway, no matter how old, or young the fraternities are, we all join together to support the Deacon Scott and you, Lady Provost. I was brought up in the High Street in Linlithgow, and apart from football matches out here, the closest I got to the brig was when I started working at Bradley Homes that were down at Stockbridge in 1970. I do have a sister who stays out in Avon Park, and my very old cousin Graham Laurie, that a lot of you'll know, is just up the road. 
I was told not to mention the Battle of the Brig, as it brought back memories to school football matches in the 1960s, <laughs> when Lithgow boys, including myself and Dyer Ronnie Bambury, dared to cross the unmarked border into the land of the Briggers. Ah yes, Lee Frickleton. We are lucky to have Lee with us today and listen to his stories. He was due to be spending the week at the Health and Beauty Farm. Unfortunately, he was thrown out on both counts. <laughs> Lee isn't great about the house. I spoke to his wife, who tells me that Lee thinks that cooking and cleaning are two towns in China. <laughs> now, Lee, could I ask you, please, to return to the steps? I did warn him. It's amazing what you can find when you do a bit of research. You don't have to come all the way up, you're okay. <laughs> From the Deacon's Cork webpage, I noticed that Lee has always wanted to carry the town standard on March's day. Lee, I think without practice, your chances of that are now slim. However, as you know, over the past 10 years, the Fraternity of Dyers have been handing out flags to children on the marches route, and then turn these, ha <laughs> ha, you know it's coming. <laughs> and in turn, they've been waved forcefully. Lee. <laughs> Please accept this gift from the, my fraternity and keep practicing, and one day, you never know, you may get your wish. <laughs> However, Ladies and gents, from a retired standard bearer for the Dyers, can I tell you it's not an easy job. For six years, I had the unenviable task of trying to keep my Lord Deacon Bobby Benny and my Lord Deacon David Benny on time and sober. I failed on all counts. I was given a very interesting insight into the life of Lee Frickleton. And, ladies and gents, Frickleton. Where does the name originate? I'll return to that, but firstly, the insight. As a teenage boy, Lee was a bit of an inventor. Always looking for ways, now called scams, to make his first millions. He came rushing into his parents' living room one day and said, Dad, we need to go to Edinburgh to the patent office before someone steals my idea. The following morning, an appointment was made, and Lee, being Lee, had his, his presentation ready. The lady at the patent office asked Lee to outline his request for the patent. Well, said Lee, I've invented a new washing powder that is going to revolutionise laundry for the world. Well, said the lady, what is the name of this revolutionary washing powder? It's called the finest universal cleaner in the kingdom. Remember that, Lee? He said with a huge smile on his face. The finest universal cleaner in the kingdom. I'm sorry, young Master Frickleton. I can't possibly patent that name as it spells out the word F-U-C-K. And that is not allowed. But patent lady, I have prepared all my advertising and I am ready to launch on STV with the help of my, my, my advertising manager, Jane, who's really nice. Please let me tell you my advertising slogan. Lee is ready, stands up, and loudly says with a smile, it's simple. If Omo doesn't brighten it, and Daz doesn't whiten it, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> my Lord Deacon Crawford, my apologies, sir. <laughs> Lee, you understand, ladies and gents, was then asked to leave. Frickin, where does the name come from? Lady Provost, this should ring an alarm bell for you. My research has failed to identify the origin of the name Frickleton. Is this man for real? Is he who he says he is? Well, I did find an unconfirmed meaning for the name uh, Lady Provost. People of the Brig, do you know this person, Frickleton? <laughs> F is for fair, always honest and true. 
R is for reassuring, eliminating doubts. I is for inventor, how many things you will create, washing powder. <laughs> C is for captive, your web of charm. K is for keepsake, your treasure, your memories. L is for life, that you live so well. E is for empathy. T is for tasteful, in the way you communicate. O is for outgoing, so sociable are you. N is for narrator, you tell many stories. <laughs> Lee, I do think that covers you well. However, I offer you my best and good luck with your practice with the Dyer's flag. People of the Brick, on behalf of all fraternities present uh, today, thank you for your successes in keeping out unwelcomed intruders from our western boundaries and for the fantastic hospitality offered and accepted by us all. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall return. Long live the Brick and long live the marches.